Rockology Hour Interviews. Well, well, welcome to Rockology Hour Interviews. I'm your host, Jake Storer, your resident rock on a sir. And we're going to throw it back to episode 64 of Rockology Hour, which was to the back end of 2019, where Jock Norton, the front man and guitarist of Puppy, came into the studio at Riverside Radio. And we sat down for an hour and had a nice fun chat. We'd chat about their, their EP3, uh, which came out, I think, a week or two before we sat down. And we also, he brought in uh, a couple of tracks which kind of influenced the new EP and kind of influenced Puppy as a whole. And yeah, we chat all things Puppy. We talk about their record, The Goat, in quite a bit of detail, which is one of my favorite records for the last kind of five years. Really incredible record. And also their EP3 is really, really strong as well. So sit back, relax, enjoy my chat with Jock Norton from Puppy. Enjoy. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Rockology Hour. I'm your host, Jake Stora, your resident rock connoisseur here at Riverside Radio. I have a very, very special guest with me in studio. Jock Norton, lead singer and axe man of Puppy, is right with me now. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, man. How are you? That was quite a nice intro. Thank oh, thank you. you. Yeah, I was just kind of off the, off the cuff. Off the cuff, wow. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been better if you wrote it, man. That was, I, that was gold. I would have messed up. I can't read. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, But we're going to have a nice chat. You picked out three awesome songs for us. Then we're just going to shoot the breeze. And sure. um, let's listen to some Puppy. Okay. This is, you, you my, know this track. My, my favorite could, hobby. Yeah. Um, this is your track, Poor Me, off your album, The Goat. That was Puppy with Paul Me to open up the show this week, episode 64, Rockology Hour. I am still joined here by Jock Norton. He's not stormed out and left me yet. No. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. It still might happen. It, it's very possible. I'm a very irritating human being. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> that, uh, that tracks off uh, your album, the, your last album, The Go, which sure. is a fantastic album. Can we talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, firstly. Um, mm. Yeah, it was sort of... Um, it was a while in the making. Um, it came out at the beginning of 2019. Um, and yeah, I, I think the first album any of us have really been involved with, you know, mm. we've all been playing in bands for years. Yeah. Um, and projects kind of come and go and fall apart and stuff. And yeah, this yeah. was the first one that kind of felt like people wanted to hear an album and stuff like that. So I think it was a really big moment for all of us. Um, but the gestation period was pretty long. I think we, we ended up, so we signed to... Uh, Spine Farm Records in 2017, yeah. which was, we'd been in band for like two years at that point. Um, mm. And then we, yeah, kind of got to work on it straight away. We, we started recording, I think we started recording the first bits in like 2018. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there was, it was kind of a lot of kind of toing and froing, we recorded it with different bits and bobs of different people. Mm. Um, so it was a very long drawn out process. I think, um, it was good in a lot of ways. It, I think the label were good at encouraging us to kind of um, to take our time and really kind of make sure the songs mm. were, were the best songs. We, yeah. we were so used to a way of working, which was like, we got four songs, we've saved up, you know, a couple of hundred quid each, let's go record an EP or whatever. Yeah. And it was just really like instant. Yeah, yeah. And this was, there was a bigger pool of songs and there mm. was kind of, yeah, just, just taking a bit more time, making sure everything was right. Um, yeah. and I think it, I think it worked. I think I think it really paid off for like, sure. Yeah, I mean, well, I, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because yeah. if, if it took quite a long time and you still love the songs, even oh, I mean, that I'm period, not sure about then, that. We hate the songs now. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So we were talking about this uh, during uh, during Poor Me. You uh -huh. don't like listening to your own voice. I, I don't like listening to our own songs. Yeah, right. I can't can't stand it. It's, really? what, it's like <laughs> like well, like I was saying to you to you off air. Like it's um, you know. Uh, we've listened to the songs you know from coming up with the first riff yeah. to trying it in practice to demoing it to and it, it's the same for everyone I suppose yeah, yeah. Um, but then A you're just very sick of it by the end especially when you're kind of coming to the final bits and you're just yeah. making sure that the mix is alright and that you know you've recorded everything the best takes mm. um, but then beyond that I think I think I think it's pretty common, but to hear the kind of all the alternate possibilities, you kind of see yeah. the alternate universes that it could have ended up yeah. in. And, you know, maybe for, you know, there was a thought you had a different bridge at one point, you listen mm. back to it, you're like, man, the old bridge is way better. Yeah. This, this sucks. I'm, really, I'm sorry, don't it did that. So yeah. Little things like that, I think, kind of yeah. annoy you. I think you're always kind of mm. um, 
thinking of you know ways ways it could be mm. improved and stuff. But then I think that's probably what, um, personally speaking, anyway, probably compels you to to carry on and do more because you're always you know you yeah. think you can better it or you know yeah. you want to fix those problems. I guess that's what a lot of us talk about, like needing a deadline. It's like we need to get this done by this specific day. Yeah. And I guess if you don't have that deadline, you're just going to go on forever. And oh no, keep tweaking. Exactly. Yeah. It'll, yeah it'll t- I mean, it was. It's funny. I think. <clears throat> with with uh, with this band, um, one of the things we were pretty um, set on from from day one was that we didn't want to. I mean, luckily, none of us are skilled enough to do this anyway. But the kind of I think the self production, the kind of home recording thing, has been amazing for loads of bands. Yeah. But uh, I think for us, we always wanted to go into a studio and, and record because. I mean, even doing it on the cheap and stuff. I'm not saying we were doing it in like, you know, <laughs> lush places early on. Yeah. But um, it it prevents you from going down that rabbit hole. I think of just constantly being able to tweak. You kind of yeah. You you get to a point you run out of money or whatever. Yeah. You know, well, I guess that's it. I oh, guess yeah. that's the song. <laughs> and I think that's quite good. I think it kind of it keeps the song sharper. And I think it keeps the songs more honest. I think mm. you know, chances are that if you know, a, a specific reverb is, is the difference between a song being good and bad. Yeah. It's probably not a great song anyway. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. if you keep it um, simple, then all those kind of bells and whistles and stuff mm. are just like a nice way to uh, yeah. hopefully bring out an already good uh, yeah. piece of music. Uh, I heard somewhere that you kind of, you write everything just kind of on guitar first and like that's kind of the basis of the song. Yeah. Is that, so do you find like kind of, is that an acoustic guitar you guys? Were you, were you, no, you guys I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy to, to <laughs> even get one of those. It's usually just an unplugged electric guitar <laughs> in my house, yeah. So if it works on just a guitar and, and your voice, then it's gonna work when it's got, like you said, all the bells and whistles. Sure, yeah, that's kind of the thinking. Yeah. And I think, I, I think even in terms of, um, this is, so weirdly we'd all, in previous bands, been in, in three pieces and I think what we'd all liked about that format as mm. well is that it kind of um, encourages you to be very economic with parts mm. and stuff like that. You yeah. know, you can't um, just have like, oh, this bit's a bit boring. We'll just have, yeah. you know, a lead guitar effect going over it for a while or something like that. And obviously that can be great for, for things. But I think for what we wanted to try and do with the band, which is, you know, do heavy music, but still kind of adhered to, I guess, mm. classic guitar pop songwriting um structure and sensibility that's quite important i think to, yeah. to have that yeah that's really um, important that's cool three nice insight oh okay thanks. so you've picked out three tracks for us today yeah well we Some actually of your favorite tracks yeah we, we we picked a track each this was this oh was, right so, so the whole band the whole band you're, got you're involved. representing yeah. i'm representing <laughs> yeah this was a, a really long um facebook chat <laughs> that went on all day today trying to get the three tracks but we, mm. we kind of wanted to um, put three tracks together that I think for us fed into what we wanted to do with the uh, EP we just released yeah. um, and three things that kind of in various ways inf- informed us I think in, mm. in, in what we wanted to do differently and expand on from, from the album yeah yeah. so the first track is a, by a band called Floor uh huh is this your is this your pick uh, this is Will actually this Will's is Will our bass player yeah he, he he put us onto Floor last <laughs> last year yeah um, we were in uh, we were driving somewhere and uh i think we kind of vaguely knew about torch and it's the same kind of singer guitarist from torch mm. and this was his old project which they then they've reformed a couple of times since and stuff mm-hmm. um but it was just one of those uh albums this is self-titled and outtakes the album's called and, mm. and when he put it on it was just uh he was super into it anyway, but for, yeah. for the rest of us it was like just those moments where you hear about like a perfect band, like it just does everything. Mm. And we're super picky, like especially about like rock music. Like we love so much of it, but we hate so much of it. So <laughs> it's like when we hear something and we, they really feel like, yeah. you know, we're like, wow, this is just right up our alley. It was mm. just, this was a, yeah, a real um, kind of light bulb moment. And I think that going into the EP, um, I'd say the reason this it kind of influenced us is because sonically it's like, you know, I don't think REP sounds like this, but sonically this is kind of garbage. Like it's like it's really <laughs> bare bones. Like it's like you you hear the mistakes in the vocals and the guitars and you know stuff's out yeah. of time sometimes and stuff. But that that kind of the, that human element really comes through, and I think it really complements the songwriting. I think the songwriting's mm. whilst being super heavy um, and there's a kind of you know a Melvin's quality to it in some respects. 
it's very it's very sweet music and i think having you know having that kind of human error element mm. complements that really well it's you know it stops it being mm. overly slick and i think that was something that we wanted yeah. to try and take into the recording cool oh this is tales of lolita by floor That was Will's pick. That was Floor with Tales of Lolita. That was a cool track, man. I really like that. I've not oh, heard that before. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think it's a bit of a kind of um, they're a bit of a kind of cult band. I mm. think. Um, I think Torch um, are kind of more successful. The his, the band that he went on to do, um, I forget the guy's name. The, um, that he went on to do a, a lot bigger. And they just they just brought out an album recently, actually, which is incredible as well. Um, yeah. It's really worth checking out. Um, so worth checking out. Well, they're called Torch, you say? The Torch. T O R C H E. Oh, a little E on the end, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's similar kind of territory. It's it's mm. really really good. But for whatever re- that collection of songs, I think for yeah. all of us is just uh, amazing. That yeah. album, yeah. So how did how did uh, how did Puppy come to be? You mentioned earlier in a few different bands and projects, but uh-huh. how did you kind of <clears throat> made Puppy a few years back? So how how did you guys get together? Uh, well, me and me and Billy, uh, we've uh, Billy, our drummer. We've we went to school together. We've we've known each other since we were like twelve. Oh, so nice. we've been in various kind of rubbish rock bands since since that age. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were kind of in and out of various projects. <clears throat> um, and then we started Puppy, um, and the, the the band kind of previously. I think we'd we'd done a few different things. Um, and most of our kind of friends, you know, that play music and stuff like that, you know, we're really lucky we have a really supportive yeah. group of friends. We're all in various bands and projects, but they weren't really like rock or, you know, metal yeah. influence in any way. We were sort I of. I know the, the feeling. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were sort of the kind of the guys who like rock, like, you yeah. know, of our friends who, again, yeah. are all in, uh, doing amazing projects. And, yeah. Um, so we kind of had, had our own kind of thing. We always. And I think when we started Puppy. We wanted to try and get back to that a bit. I think mm. we'd always done bands where we tried to find a way to shoehorn a guitar harmony solo or something <laughs> yeah. into the project, and we could never. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and we'd kind of tried that in various iterations mm. and various sort of like um, degrees of failure over over the years. And then yeah. I think when, yeah, we started Puppy. We wanted to kind of maybe push that more. The kind mm. of the. They'd, we'd always been in bands that sounded a bit like Weezer or something like that, but then I think we wanted to bring more of a kind of like um, overt kind of rock influence. And then when Will Will was in a band called Throne for a long time, who were a, mm. a kind of like a doomy kind of stoner band, um, you know, kind of like Sabbath influence, a bit like Sleep or something. Yeah. Um, and we he was always like the, our like dream bass player. I'd known him for years. We really? used to work together. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, we worked at a bar and we would always uh, close up listening to the Bill and Ted soundtrack. That was, that was <laughs> what we um, and, but he was, yeah, he was in this band for years and the timing just never really worked out. And then yeah. we went through a couple of different bass players and then um, he, his band kind of went on hiatus. Uh, and yeah, it was just the stars line. And it was, it was the first, I think when we, as soon as we started playing together and because he had that, like he was the only like legit rock guy. Like he like you know what I mean. He played like Desert Fest and stuff like yeah. that. So we were like wow, like an actual rock yeah. person can yeah. be in a band. I think that we felt kind of like slightly you know less like tourists with him with him in the group. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was. I think when we all played together, it was the first time. You know, me and me and Billy had always kind of been pretty solid uh, playing together, but it really felt like the first time it was like a band. Like the mm. band is, yeah, is yeah. these three people, and. You know, it, yeah, that that was that was kind of it, really. And I think um, our, our ideas musically were always kind of fairly along the same lines, which was, you know, like I said, mentioned earlier, kind of I guess like classic guitar pop kind yeah. of songwriting. You know, we're a big band, big fans, sorry, yeah. of you know stuff like Teenage Fan Club and mm. like you know yeah, bands like, like Big Star and like the Beatles and you know stuff yeah. like that. But then trying to bring a kind of yeah, a love of kind of like 
classic rock and it's, heavy rock. Yeah, it's and very, metal. yeah, your sounds very heavy, but you've got really nice kind of a melodic kind of poppy hooks in there. Yeah, which yeah. Really, that's really like a my street. I kind of oh, like cool. that. Yeah, oh, cool. Oh, thank you, man. I love that that heavy guitar, but then it's like, oh, it's got a real catchy hook in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's funny. I think it's um, like we'd always try to incorporate, like that was kind of part of the mission statement to incorporate that stuff because it's something that we, we love so mm-hmm. much. I think um, there's a kind of, I think sometimes with like heavier bands um, who have melodies or hooks, sometimes it can feel like, mm-hmm. you know, you know the verse is like a you know, shouted vocal or whatever that mm-hmm. gets the chorus and you've got, you know, the hook as it were. Yeah. Um, and I th- we never wanted it to feel like we were doing that, like, you know, like we were tagging on a catchy bit to yeah. sell the riff or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that was so intrinsic to everything as well. Yeah. And then, you know, I think, you know, on, on when we came time to the album, I mean, there's songs on there, there's a song there called Nightwalker, which is yeah. pretty riffless. It just sounds like Teenage Fan Club with more distortion. <laughs> it's kind of how it's come up. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was, that was very important to us. Um, and yeah, we just kind of kept, riding that wave a bit, I suppose, and, and, and taking little kind of detours mm. here and there um, and uh, just trying to keep ourselves entertained, really. That's, yeah. that's always been the thing, you know. We, I think we, we kind of realised that no one really liked the music that we liked in the same, mm. you know, the, all the same combination of stuff that we yeah. liked. So we just thought, well, just you know, who cares? We'll just make this <laughs> dumb music. And, and then f- I guess it's that funny thing, as soon as you stop caring what people think or whatever... That's, That's more, when you more get successful. people kind of well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. I call oh, your, your successful. album. <laughs> the, 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 the gun got critical acclaim, and I, I was going to. Right, yeah. I was going to festivals over the summer. I saw loads of puppy merch everywhere. I was like, sure. You guys and holding absence were two of the ones I was like, wow, those guys again. Wow. Uh, wow. wow. People yeah. really liking it. So yeah. you got quite a cool, like unique style, kind of like a. Uh, for the for the merch is kind uh-huh. of like an old school kind of actiony kind of I guess it's seventies like Thunderbirdsy kind of oh yeah steel, lo- love a bit of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's just it's just hastily cobbled together on Photoshop the day before we go on tour usually but uh, it's working <laughs> isn't that well? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that ain't broke yeah um, but yeah um, yeah that's yeah I don't know what, yeah I kind of I'm going off on a tangent here but, oh no yeah. worries well I'm getting told we um, going to move over to the news okay hold on. Uh, oh, sorry. There'll be no news at half. There'll be no news. We can talk for longer. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. cool. I was trying to interpret sign language. There's nothing. There's nothing interesting going on. In, um, in, in I think we world. had it uh, the hour, and I think Mickey's feeling a bit under the weather because he, uh, yeah, oh, it's okay. fine. If Fair you want, enough. But he'll be back. He'll be back at nine. Can, so if I you if you guys are listening to this I, and going, I miss the news desperately. Hold on to nine. <laughs> it's not too far. I can just kind of Google stuff that's going do on. Do you want? Right do you want to do your own news? Read, read yeah. The news. Yeah. Try to keep it politically free. Oh, politi- um, oh God. Yeah. No, uh, that's, that's all it will be, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else going on. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so we should probably move on. We've got more time to talk. This is great. Um, so the next track you've picked out, Lil Ugly Mane by Bedwetter. No, so... Sorry, hold on. This is labelled incorrectly. This is labelled incorrectly. Okay, so <laughs> it's... Uh, so Lil Ugly Mane is a, is a rapper um, yeah. who also goes by the name Bedwetter. Okay, yeah. same guy. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Um, and so this project um, is... I'm just trying to get the name. Give me two secs. No worries. Bedwetter. That's a bold name. Uh, <laughs> Bedwetter, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. He's backed he's himself just, there, fully. Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> has. It's uh, Cave Yourself Over. Sorry, that took me a Yeah, lot. that's all right. Uh, Cave Yourself Over by Bedwetter, also known as Little Ugly Mane. Um, mm. And he was a... So we um, were really fortunate to get to go over to South by Southwest earlier in the year. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, which was a really kind of, that was a bit of a, you know, had been a dream for a yeah, while, yeah. you know, going Imagine. to the States and also yeah. going South by Southwest. Um, and he was one of the people, Will, our bass player, who, again, has by far the best musical taste of, of the three of us. Um, I think Will's getting too much credit here. Like, he's, uh, he's listen, still on that pedestal. He's the, the man. He's, he's the on the man. throne still. Yeah, he's, on, he's on the throne. He's the guy on the sports of the throne, man. He did um, pick a good song, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so he he kind of introduced, introduced us to Little Ugly Man. He was one of the people, when we were looking at the lineup, he was like, we've got to see this guy's rapper, I really like. Um, and, we, you know, I, th- I don't know if it's kind of common, but we went to South by Southwest and probably saw maybe like six bands in like a week like we weren't doing oh, there was of, <laughs> yeah we were just drinking frozen margaritas <laughs> and like eating barbecue and stuff yeah I mean, that sounds fantastic yeah it was we had a great time yeah. depends which bands you missed but uh... yeah i mean nothing major i don't think okay, we but... saw a little ugly main so yeah. all was well 
But um, cool. so we saw this artist, and we, we yeah, we all kind of like really took to him. Mm. Um, and then again, trying to tie everything to this EP, this was this was Billy's choice actually. This song, um, because this bed wetter stuff, it's kind of a bit, it's very textural. It's a bit more kind of ambient. Mm. It's quite weird. Um, and there's a couple of on our new EP uh, three. There's a couple of um, interludes we have on there. Yeah, um, and we wanted to kind of ape stuff like this kind mm. of sonically it was it was um again you know the the way we wanted to record the whole thing was very kind of spartan and very having a lot of the room in there and a lot yeah. of the um you know really feeling like you're hearing the band playing around rather than a yeah. kind of you know uh, a um this kind of super amped up version of the band you're kind of hearing it you know it sounds more, live yeah yeah exactly yeah. a bit more of that kind of yeah, thing yeah. Um, so um, yeah we wanted these little interludes mm. um, which we which we recorded and this was kind of a blueprint for sonically with what we were thinking for that um, and it also uh, his his art little ugly man artwork was also a big influence on our artwork for this, mm. this EP yeah. so that was our main rip off <laughs> on this one thanks little lucky man yeah and I'll be going on the merch as well which I'm sure I'll see at all the festivals next oh, summer oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah well we should probably play his track to say thanks mate uh, this is little ugly man with uh, cave yourself over That was Lil Ugly Mame with Cave Yourself Over. I wouldn't expect that kind of track, but it's it's a nice, like, like you said, interlude, and you can kind of uh-huh. tell the influences on uh, on your new uh, EP. Is yeah. it, you calling it volume free, or is it just free, or is it? Uh, it's, it's whatever you want to call it, man. Yeah. We, 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 we went for th- it's three, so it's always three lowercase i's on the yeah. thing. We'd well, say I, three, some, you know, I, some I, say I, volume I, three. I, 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 yeah, you want to call I, it that. E, maybe. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of um, something that we took took influence from mm. sonically. I think um, we all uh, listen to music in you know in that sort of world, more kind of mm. ambient stuff quite a lot yeah. as well. And it doesn't tend to find our way into our music that much. Um, yeah. So it was a nice way to be able to kind of like touch upon that. Mm-hmm. Um, and on on the on our new EPs, we have uh, these two interludes, interludes called Figure One and Figure Two. And mm. One of them's like kind of a little guitar thing, and one of them's a, a bass thing. Yeah, the Figure One reminded me of Jeff Buckley. Oh wow, cool! Yeah, That's yeah. nice. I was, like, I was listening to it uh, earlier today, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Oh, thanks, yeah. man. And I yeah. saw it, you you posted on Instagram. And it was like uh, something. I think it was it was a little while back promoting your. Um, I think it was your tour, uh-huh. and it was like this kind of really fun, like kind of like uh, transformers, and like there was like text oh, saying, like, yeah. free average musicians. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, they're not average. That's decent. That's like Jeff Buckley. <laughs> oh, that's really <laughs> brilliant, man. But yeah, those with the, so those two little mm. interludes, we kind of that was the first time, and it's something we'd always kind of wanted to do yeah. as a band, and we never really had time, or it was always kind of. It, I think there was some stuff we had planned for the goat actually that was meant to be mm. some kind of textural sort of stuff to kind of bookend it and things. Um, and you get so so caught up doing mm. the kind of quote unquote important stuff, you know, yeah. you're guitars, you're doing vocals, you're making sure the drum takes are right, yeah. and, and the meat and potatoes of the whole kind of album. Yeah, that you know, you suddenly realize on like the last day, it's like, oh, we've got to come up with these lovely little kind of mm. ambient pieces of music, um, and it's just never worked out. You know, we yeah. tried stuff, and it's, we've always been like, ah, feels a bit rushed. Yeah, but for this one, uh, we really wanted to to push it. It just it felt like it fit, fitted thematically I guess yeah. with, with what, what we wanted to do with the EP yeah. um, and Billy got to um, we, we kind of gave them to Billy actually we recorded them mm. and he, he overlaid some, some stuff over it so I think during figure one you've got the it's like he's in this he was in a f- like a field on mm. holiday and he found this like this, uh, this all these cows with like bells around their necks and it was this really just weird, serene scene where he's standing. Dream just sequence, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty much, yeah. yeah. And they were just all kind of walking around him kind of slowly with the little bells like, kind of like clanging away. So that's that, Creed, that's that yeah. recording. So that's what you hear. Oh, that's actually that. from the... Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's cool. Yeah. So he kind of like field recorded that and then kind of mixed nice. that in over the guitar. So just to kind of add a bit of kind of weirdness to it. Yeah, that's and, r- sorry, I have to, I've to. i just seen the time. We've got to quickly throw it to the lads with the ads and then we'll pick oh, up on this no straight up because I want to hear more about this. Yeah. Uh, but quickly, lads with the ads and then we'll be back. This is Riverside. This is Riverside, just in case you didn't hear. Um, 
just well, to be totally yeah, just clear. to be totally clear <laughs> you are listening to rockology hour on riverside radio i am still unbelievably joined <laughs> by jock norton he has not left after those uh, <laughs> actually i won't say it was, I, I love it, was a, it was a fantastic advert yeah um <laughs> Uh, can we go back? Sorry, I had, to, I had to cut you off there That's to get the right. ads with the ads in the pause for the cause. Uh, you were talking about the the uh, the cow the cows with the bells on. Sure. And you used that recording in um, one of your tracks on the new EP. Yeah, yeah. So the um, the two interludes we have on the on the EP, figure one, figure two. Like I was saying, that was it mm. was a kind of um, I guess a kind of a field of interest with the band. You know, um, more ambient sounding stuff mm. and, and more textural kind of music um that we just couldn't i mean we managed to shoehorn most other things into puppy but that was yeah. always the one that we found yeah. a bit, bit harder um and yeah it was something we, we really wanted to do so um we wanted to overlay these kind of pieces that me and will have come up with with um a bit more you know something to kind of get a bit more kind of texture and give it a bit more kind of like sonically just a bit more interesting and yes, yeah, so what you hear in the first one, figure one, um, is is from when Billy was on this on this holiday, um, and I think went out on this kind of morning walk and found himself on this kind of weird hill by himself, surrounded by all these these cows with little bells around their neck, just kind of having a having a little wander. Was he okay? Was he sober at the time? Was he? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he's, he brought back evidence, so yeah, okay, it, yeah. it, it definitely happened. Oh, did um, he record on his phone? Did he? Yeah, he just oh. kind of field recorded out there. Cool. Yeah, and. Uh, I think, you know, Billy makes films and stuff, so I yeah. think he was like, this will be good for something, and do, do, uh, kept in the back pocket. Do yeah. you guys, do, did I hear correctly that you guys do your own videos, or like you kind of come up with the ideas? We do our own for videos, your... we do our own stunts, we yeah. do, do everything, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, jumping off the building was pretty brave. That right? was, like, yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, yeah, we, yeah, we do. Um, so uh, usually, so that's kind of um, Billy and Will usually mm. uh, take turns, uh, roughly, to, yeah. to make, to put them together. Um, and it's yeah, it's 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 just it's I mean it's become pretty intrinsic to the yeah. band. I think it's like um, we're just kind of control freaks and trying to kind of <laughs> chat, you know explain something to someone or it just always seems so much more trouble. Mm. It probably isn't. It's probably a lot easier yeah. to do anything. Just turn up. And just <laughs> but like I don't know. It's just it's 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 even though it's yeah, it's a lot more kind of work from our end. It's. It's we care about every element of it so much, mm. you know. We, but Billy does has done the artwork for both the the albums as well. Yeah. Well, the, the al- in fact, everything he's done pretty much. He, he did the artwork for the, the goat for as the well. goat. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. He made that. And I, then, that's fantastic artwork. Oh, thanks, the skull, man. Skull the pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. All, all your artwork awesome, but uh, that one especially. Yeah, really yeah. Like. We were super ha- super happy with it. Um, and uh, yeah, we just we I don't know. It's like it's it's a fun mm. project. Something we really care about yeah. and, and and controlling. All those elements is just yeah, it's just it, it's important to us. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, we've tried, we've kind of toyed with the idea of someone else doing a video, and it's just mm. it's always been like, nah, that's not what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, it just it just always seems kind of counterintuitive to yeah. us, and, and we're, we're super lucky to have um, both Billy and Will be so um, you know uh, able to actually deliver in that respect mm. that. It seems silly not to, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, fair play. Okay, so your third and final pick uh, uh-huh. for your tracks, which you've brought for me today, L- Rollins Band, Low Self Opinion. Did you say this one was your one? This was my one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I brought, love I brought band, in this. Man. Oh, brill. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, and uh, this was another again. You know, trying to bring everything back to this this new EP and 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 why these tracks sort of feed into them. There was, I think. Generally speaking, with with Rollins Band, I love how powerful the songs sound. Yeah, just with just those composite parts, you know, mm. like there's not a huge amount going on in terms of even overdubs and stuff. Yeah, the, the guitar playing, you know, across all their stuff is just mm. some of my f- absolute favorite. Yeah. It kind of you know mixes lead and rhythm, <clears throat> and mm. it's got this kind of quality to it. It's kind of it's really groovy mm. um, and like heavy, but there's a yeah, there's a kind of like almost a kind of funk element to it as well. Yeah. Like, um, especially I mean, the, all the musicians are, are amazing on it, and mm. I think it kind of it really suits 
Henry, it's a perfect vehicle for him, I think. I think this is some of his best work. Like, oh, for sure. Like, there's some diehard Black Flag fans out there who mm-hmm. like swear by it, but Ryan's band for me is like, way more to it, way more. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think the kind of possible. yeah the 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 I think the the direction Black Flag was heading in with when he was in mm. the band. Yeah, seems to me to kind of like this seems like kind of more of like a almost like a logical conclusion. Of that. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, obviously, without. Greg Ginn being in the band, yeah, but, um, but yeah, I just I, I love it. I think it's uh, and and it was something that we really thought about. I think mm. I think when we did the goat, whilst um, from a from a songwriting perspective, everything's very rooted in in a three piece band, yeah, um, and you know we always wanted to make sure we could play the songs live and they didn't sound like garbage, mm. um, which I don't know if we succeeded on that level, but we. Uh, you we, did. <laughs> You're so hard on yourself. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. It's just I'm, I'm very English. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, uh, the self-deprecation is endearing to sure. your fans. So yeah. Sure. That's, it's all. A, it's all a, just. A it's act. all a ruse. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm super confident. Yeah. yeah. I, walk out here, I put my sunglasses on. Yeah. Keep the door open. Yeah. You should probably put your fag out as well. Where'd you get that bottle of whiskey? Happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. The um, where was I? Sorry. Yeah. So the 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 Rollins band stuff. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. when we when we did the goat. And I think what has been the kind of the um, the way we've operated ever since we started the band was, although everything from a songwriting perspective, like I said, was rooted in the three mm. instruments and just, you know, like backing vocals and stuff. We never had keyboards, anything like that. Yeah. But we did fill a lot of holes, you know, yeah. like we could, we'd put an extra guitar there. We'd put like, you know, a four part harmony where, yeah. you know, there's only three of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, we would we would cheat. I'm thinking a bit. the black hole chorus has those sure. amazing harmonies. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. It's like that's a big sound. There's yeah. a lot, lot going on there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I, th- I think you know, uh, being a being a fan uh, uh, of a band like Rollins Band, what I like so much is that they kind of really lean into what they can do in a room, mm. uh, and I think we wanted to just take that even further and, and go like. You know, what does it sound? You know, on this on this new EP, if you hear a backing vocal, that's mm. Will. Yeah. Because like Will would do it. If you, you know, if you hear a lead vocal, that's me. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think um, that's why it sound like live. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's kind of I guess the band. You know, sounding. Mm. Um, you know, it's like a like a yeah, it's mm. like a really good kind of live yeah. sound. And I think we were kind of influenced by and our, our producer uh, Misha, who worked in it, we recorded at a place called Holy Mountain Studios in Hackney, which is an, an amazing place, and he's mm. an amazing guy to work with he he comes very much from that uh, lineage i think in his production style and approach of you know the kind of steve albini ish kind mm-hmm. of thing he's very much into capturing the room capturing the energy mm-hmm. um and whilst this isn't you know albini produced it was uh, from a kind of it, in a lot of ways this was this is pretty influential actually there's, mm-hmm. there's a track called charms on the ep which has got yeah. a kind of a a bit of a kind of slidey. I don't know. I was trying to approximate the kind of like mm. funky, groovy kind of element a little yeah. bit of, of music like this. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, just being able to hear the musicians, far better musicians than us, but being <laughs> just being really good and all, all nailing it. Yeah. Ironic that this track is called Low Self Opinion. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you have to I, take I, it literally. I, I, I didn't think about that coming in. But uh, yeah, this is Rollins Band with the track Low Self Opinion. <laughs> That was Puppy's new track, Serotonin. Sorry we had to skip to that because uh, time constraints, but I love that track. And it's, oh, thanks, man. And it's off your brand new EP, Three. 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 Oh, aye, 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 aye. Aye, 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 aye. Oh, yes. uh, however you yeah, <laughs> want to phrase it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like Ed Sheeran had plus ad or whatever That's it's called. Which we're trying to get on that you know, bandwagon. Yeah. He's, he's pretty successful. So yeah, he, figured, he's done all right. He's done all right. So we figured we copied that. Yeah. Then, Yours uh, is much better though, but um, <laughs> unless you're a massive Ed Sheeran yeah. fan. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, love that track. I urge everyone to go check out your new EP three on Spotify, Apple Music, however you ingest your music. Deezer. Deezer. Who oh, forgets Deezer. about Deezer? Psh, the dark horse, De- man. Deezer oh, oh, the geezer. He's the geezer. He's the geezer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you guys are on tour very, very soon very with Bokassa. Bokassa, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we've, we've uh, you know, been a fan of those guys for a while. Um, and when, when it kind of seemed to come together, mm. like, you know, the, the kind of, uh, it was on the table, we all, yeah, we all thought it seemed like an amazing... Yeah. idea they're like a really kind of like fun rock band as well mm. i say as well like we're a fun rock band but um it's a co-headline as well yeah, yeah well yeah co-headline in the uk i think we're yeah, yeah. we're um supporting them in europe 
Um, but yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a big one. Mm. I think we start on the first show's next Tuesday, which mm. is, I believe, in Stockholm. You got you got the dates in front. I've, of you? I've just got it? the UK dates. Oh, you've got the UK dates. So the, oh, let's, the let's just push the UK one. Yeah. Then. No one here is listening. Uh, well, I don't know. We, from we actually get quite a few listeners from America. But oh, really? Yeah. Well, we're not uh, going there. That's fine. unfortunately. Um, but uh, we, the, I guess, for Londoners at Riverside Radio, uh-huh. they're interested. In, and I'm going to this Underworld in London, sixth of December. Sixth of December. It's going off. It's going off. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a, a, a heck of a night. Yeah. World's yeah. end afterwards, or are you just gonna? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Maybe Matt Stocks is DJing. We could hang out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe the Black Heart. Yeah. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll... actually, that's a good question. It's Black Heart or World's End? Because I'm moving towards the Black Heart these days. Yeah. It's a little bit quieter and a little bit less touristy. Yeah, that's my that's my go-to. It's, I think it, yeah. it, when I'm when I'm in the when I'm in the area mm. when I'm in the the Camden. Yeah. In the uh, end. In the end. Yeah, yeah. when I'm in the end, yeah. I, I tend I, to go to Black Heart. I heard Dinosaur Pilot had a, a nice Black Heart reference in one of their new tracks. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so no I'm buying a drink at the Black Heart or something. I'm oh, going to meet me at the Black Heart layer. Oh, really? Something like that. Yeah, oh, that was that's good. The, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I'm, so I mentioned this, uh, to, this to you earlier, but I do a discovery and record of the week every week. Right. So I want to get your instant thoughts and feedback you can be as honest as you want. Uh-huh. They're not here. They're not going to come in. Um, okay. Especially what... <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I so, really wish they were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've got... I found a Scottish punk band this week called Snash. Sure. Sh- yes. And... Uh, Snash. This is their new track, White Out. Let me know your thoughts after. It's very punky. So I really like it. Do it. It goes like this. <laughs> That was my discovery of the week. That was Snash with White Out. Uh huh. Do you like it? Yeah, I thought it, I thought it sounded very cool. It, was, yeah. it, it had a very I, I like the uh, the production style as well. It, mm. it sounded pretty raw, yeah. pretty, raw yeah. pretty energetic. Um, yeah, they sound like they're having a blast. Fun live. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, it sounded great. <laughs> drink a buck fast. Get down there wherever they're. I haven't checked their tour dates, but drink ten buck fast and go watch that live. That's okay. Like a great night. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, Jock. I've seen the time. We've got about a minute left. I w- okay. Uh, so I'm going to have to urge everyone, I urge everyone to check out your new EP. Three? Sure. You guys are at the Underworld in Camden on the 6th of December. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll probably be drunk, so apologies in advance. So will I, man. It's fine. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll be, we'll be all in it together. It's cool. Where can we follow Puppy on the socials? So we're at, at Puppy Vibes with yeah. a Y. So Puppy v- yeah. V-Y-B-E-S. I, yeah. I don't know why we chose that handle. It's very dumb. Like <laughs> but uh, on, on everything. At least you've got that brand consistency across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're consistently <laughs> stupid across everything. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to quickly move over to my record of the week. Record of the week, which I know know you're a big fan of uh-huh. Van Halen 1984 Psh. gonna end on Panama I mean it's the greatest song of all time we can't really end on a better note really <laughs> Jock thanks so much for coming in man I really appreciate thank it thank you mate alright nice see you on the 6th we're off <laughs> That was a good one. That was Jock Norton from Puppy uh, coming in the studio. I think it was towards the back end of 2019. Um, yeah, awesome dude. Puppy are an amazing band. If you've not heard them, you've got to go check them out. They're really, really awesome. Uh, like I said in the intro, The Goat is one of my favorite records of the last five or so years. It's just an absolute banger. And their, their EP3 was really, really uh, badass as well. Uh, yeah, so check out puppy on puppy vibes on the socials see what they're up to keep up to date with them and to keep up to date rockology hour at rockology hour on twitter on the instagram uh www.rockologyhour.com is the mothership which has everything on there and please follow subscribe share with a mate pass the pod um to help grow this bad boy five star review season give us even if you don't think it's that good give it five stars anyway banner like may as well um but yeah, as long as you don't give a one star, that's, I'd rather have a, no stars than a one star. Um, so <laughs> just do whatever you want, uh, but just don't kill my dreams. Okay, uh, I've been Jake Story, your resident rock on us. Uh, please check out some of the older interviews. We've got some, quite the back catalogue now. Um, and we have another brand new interview for you next week. We drop this bad boy on Sundays. So yeah, every Sunday, get ready for it. Get yourself locked in. Hopefully Monday morning if you're working from home or do, commuting or doing whatever you're doing, you'll have a nice juicy new interview for you 
ready to go, ready to take your mind off things for an hour. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. I've been Jake Story, your resident rock on a sir. Stay safe, stay sane. I'm off. <laughs>